So I want to share just a few tips with you so you can get the most out of your core exercises. Oftentimes I hear, hey, I feel pain that I'm pulling from my neck or my hip flexors, but I don't really feel it in my core. So hopefully these tips will help because I want you to get the most out of these exercises and obviously not injure yourself. So with that said, we're going to start with some of the very basics. So I'm going to have you follow along with me as I do this. So I want you to lay down on your floor and we're going to get into this position. So just knees bent and your head's on the ground. And I want you to find your ab muscles. Right now with your head down, it's just gushy. I don't feel anything. Dig. Now we're gonna raise our head. So you'll notice as you raise your head, something as simple as this, all of your abs contract. So now I can feel them, right? Lack of better terms, they're on, off, right? I got nothing. I can feel them contract, on and off. The first thing with doing core exercises is understanding how to identify and contract, brace, and really squeeze through the core. Because if we don't know how to do that, as we're doing the movement, we don't know how to isolate and use the core. That's when our neck and our hip flexors come into play. So with this, I've got a quick exercise for you. I want you to keep your nails, and I mean like dig your nails into your, your six pack muscles, right? Right through here, your rectus abdominis. And as we're gonna raise our head, I want you to breathe. And I want you to squeeze these nails into that stomach. Oh, and then release. Squeeze and release. Another inhale. Squeeze those with your fingernails. Why? Because we need to get the mind muscle connection that that bracing, right? When you're digging your nails, you're giving your body the sensory um, to be able to say, Okay, she says squeeze my core. How the heck do I know how to, how do I squeeze that? What am I squeezing? Well, when you're digging your nails in it, you have a great sensory to be able to see. That's the spot I wanna squeeze and it makes it easier to contract right where your nail is digging. So as you're bracing and pulling this in, our fingernails give us an idea of how to squeeze and we're gonna practice that breathing. Another way to think of this bracing is if you're to be punched in the stomach, you're not gonna let someone just punch you when it's loose, right? You naturally brace. So again, not that you want this, but if someone's gonna punch you, you brace and it's rock hard. That's that same feeling as we go from off to on. So now that you can identify this, uh, another way to think of it is wringing out a dish rag, right? So we're wringing a dish rag really nice and tight and it's contracted. That's again, how this feels. So as long as you can identify, oh, okay, I can feel them on, I'm digging my nails in it so I know where to squeeze, they're really tight. Now we're gonna add a movement. We're gonna do a heel slide with just our right foot. This is not an exercise. This is a way to identify where am I breathing and keeping these on so that then you can take this exercise, keep them contracted for every other movement you're doing. So we're gonna breathe with a big inhale. Raise our heads so now they're hard and keep it. Relax so they're off, brace. and back in. So you should be able to feel that go off and on. We need to get used to that bracing and contracting because now let's take it the next step of, let's say when we're in a position to come up and do a sit up, right? A lot of times we pull through here and these hip flexors, but now I want you to practice. You got three sections of your abs, upper, mid, and lower. I'm gonna dig on the upper and I want you to think, where am I poking and squeeze in that area? So we're gonna inhale and then tight, and squeeze right on that muscle and back down. Now move to the middle, inhale, squeeze on that hard muscle and down. Lower, poke and back down. Those fingernails will help you identify where you need to contract as you're moving. So even as I come up and I do a roll up and a sit up, I will use my nails, squeeze. That is a huge difference because I now know to pull from where my nails are instead of allowing my hip flexors and my neck to take over. So practice that. Any core exercise you feel like you're struggling with, put your fingernails in the abs, squeeze the heck out of it because that will give you an idea of where to contract. So one other last tip is when you're on the ground, a lot of times we do exercises like, let's say, leg raises, right? This is what you want a flush back on the ground. But we, we often see when we're not engaged through our core is this, right? Our hips tilt and we have a big gap. And let me show you what that, oh my gosh, that hurts to even do. When I do that, I can't even straighten my legs and that hurts my low back. Well, oh, that's, that's awful. So I want you to tuck your hips, flush with the ground, and now I can straighten my legs and I can come way farther 
completely different. So any exercise you do with the flat back on the ground, please don't ever allow your back to uh, arch like this. Tuck and keep it flush with the ground. So much easier. Also, if you need to ever modify an exercise, if we're doing anything with the legs and let's say we're lowering them, that's challenging. Please know that a regression or more beginner movement is to come only as far as you can until the back pops your knees bend. So if you're doing something and you can come to here with your legs straight and the back flat, great. But let's say you come here and all of a sudden back arched and knees bend. That tells me that you're not quite strong enough to come all the way down, but it's awesome because now you know where your bench level is. So you can get to, let's say here, and then in time, you get stronger, stronger, and stronger. But please, if this arches or your legs start to bend, know that it's not safe to continue going down because your core isn't quite strong enough. Now, lastly, I want to talk for a second about planking. When we plank, when we're in this position or in a forearm position, we don't just hang. Right? Too often, we're down here with our head, our arch through our back. All of that's going to hurt, and it's not a true plank, right? We don't want injuries. We want to get the most out of this. So we want, see how with my back arch like this, my stomach and my core is almost lengthened and pulled apart. It's not tight and contracted like we talked about. So when you're in this plank position with incorrect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten my knees. I'm going to tuck that butt. And instead of here, I'm going to push up. So I'm pulling my ears away from my shoulders. And then I've, I've got my center of my elbow is pointed here, not in. So when I'm here, I am in a tight plank, right? Every single part of me hurts. My quads are on fire. My butt is tucked. My stomach is braced. And I'm up in an arch. I'm not here. I'm here. I'm not here, that's lengthening the abs. We wanna contract them. So anytime, if we're doing knee in, everything is going to come tucked. So let's say I'm in a plank position here. This is how I am, right? I want to bring the hips in, I wanna push away. So now you can see this is in a little bit of a hollow hold and these are on instead of stretched. So it's very important through all of our movements, you think, what is my stomach doing? Am I tight and contracted? Am I pulling from here? Am I using my neck? Am I just moving back and forth without any idea of actually using the centerpiece, which is the core in the middle, or am I just pulling my, you know, my legs and my arms back and forth? So hopefully as you practice some of these movements and really think, where am I pulling from? Use your nails to target that muscle to help get that squeeze. It is going to make a massive difference in feeling stable and confident with your movements, avoiding any low back pain, especially with planking, and you're gonna see the gains that you want.